You look around briefly for a pair of dragons arranging brightly colored spheres, but can't find any, so you direct your attention to the stage. Lead singer looks frustrated. As the next song begins, he screams tits, tits into the mics and looks frustrated again, then screams tits, tits. You finally figure out he's trying to say dance, dance. You take pity on him when you start bobbing your head and tail with the music. A particularly attractive person, you know, someone with whom you'd like to have a horizontal relation, sees your funky moves and drops you a salacious wink. It's a wink so full of sensual suggestion it reverberates in your mind long after the winker has disappeared. We get an effect, Winklerd. You can't get the image out of a, of a particularly flirtatious wink out of your mind. It's like the world has given you two thumbs up with an A for good measure. Don't know whether you should jump some pu- uh, jump over some sharks or punch a jukebox. Neither of the options present themselves, so just concentrate on the image of the wink. And don't worry about the rest. You're okay, Cunningham, you're okay. And we get 40% more meat from monsters. So... It's only been a couple of days since I last adventured here, but I did some stuff. I'm Alfred, by the way. Welcome to Kingdom of Loathing. Um, I joined a clan, the Seal Clubber's Order. I can jump in this ball pit, which gives me this effect, having a ball, which doubles every stat I have, which is pretty great, as you can see. It also gives me bonus adventures. Meanwhile, here, I'm fighting a dirty thieving brigand still. Sister Cola Culi approaches you, takes the meat. Thanks for covering the meat. You've recovered a good portion of the stolen meat, but there's still plenty left. So what this means is I've gotten a bunch of meat now, but it still is like, hey, you got to go get more meats. This hasn't changed as far as I know. But there are some new enemies here. You're fighting a war hippie sky captain. This hippie is an officer in the airborne wing of the hippie army, whose motto is like, we're like so high, man. Since the hippies don't have any airplanes or balloons, and the zeppelins are made of lead, the airborne wing consists of sugar-addled ferrets strapped into mini biplanes. It's the only idea you can think of when you've eaten way too many herbal brownies. All right. You look over and see a platoon of frat boys round up a funk of hippies and take them prisoner. Since being a POW, the frat boys involves a lot of pure drinking, you're slightly envious. But since it also involves a lot of paddling, you're somewhat less so. So the main thing that we're working on now is just trying to get through all of these. It appears that this is the only... Ad- oh! Such a hippocampus who approaches you and takes the meat. Thank you for covering the meat. You've recovered more than half of what was stolen. It won't be long now. Cool. I'll cut here and then go ahead and come on back whenever I've gotten some more of the meat taken care of. Hey, a couple of adventures later and we're back. Sister Cerebellum approaches you and takes the meat. Thank you for covering this meat. I think this is the last of it. How can we pay you for the assistance? Well, it helped the war effort if your convert could serve as a massage parlor to help our troops la- relax. Consider it done, she says, winking. Stop by when you're feeling tense, and one of our sisters will take care of you. We've already gotten all the stolen meat. Let's head to my backpack, and let's, uh, crunch and maunch. Hmm. Oh, yeah, vampire chowder. Hell yeah, give me that. Uh, hmm. Sweet little Alabama? Nope. Sheet cake? Nice. Let's have, a, let's have a few more, why don't we? Let's have a whiskey sour, too. All right. Venture, you look so tense. Allow us to use our skilled hands to give you a refreshing massage. So it'll heal the shit out of you. It's a full heal, which is pretty nice. I think we've already. I think I've already read this one. Oh, a green clay bead. You see a squadron of cars drive up, and a squad of policemen arrest a flock of hippies who are sitting around inhaling smoke from some sort of glass sculpture. Oh boy. Let's drop that clay bead off. Ooh, it's worth five quarters. I've got thirty-three quarters. Damn, that's quite a lot. I wonder if I can soon. I'll be able to make it to one of these, right? I think I've already read one of these as well. Hippie Green Gourmet. Green Gourmet. Ha ha ha. That's funny. 
Elder Shaman. This is an old wizard woman who spent her entire life bringing herself more into with Gaia so she can use the Earth's own power against those who would defile it. Using Earth, Wind, Water, Fire, and a Heart, she casts unbelievably potent spells without saying a word. She's the most powerful shaman, uh, shop person who ever lived, and she's ready to give you what for. What for? For Gaia. You get the jump on her. You see a keg tank rumble through the battlefield, firing beer cans at the top turn. It mows down like 30 hippies in a row, but then it runs out of ammo. They should have stocked more than one sex pack. We got carbonated soy milk. Let's drop those off. Nice. I got 36 quarters. I can get the perforated paddle, battle paddle, but it's a two-handed club, and I don't really want that. So now I think I've really done all the side quests here. A funk of hippies. That's still one of the funniest things. It's the entire regiment of hippies throw down their arms and weapons in disgust and walk off the battlefield. War? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again now. I like how they threw down their arms. Oh, shit. We can go here now. All right. So we got the pond, the back 40, the other back 40, the bog, the shade thicket, McGill and Eddie's farmhouse, the family plot, the granary, and the barn. Ach, me farm, it's overrun. Dukes all over. Dukes, you reply. What are dukes? Dukes. Dukes, you stupid get. Great flapping beasts with webbed feet and dills. Dukes. Ah, I gotcha. I'll see what I can do. I can't go to any of these besides the barn. You're fighting a generic duck. McMillicuddy's farm... Mc, McMillicuddy's farm has been overrun by a jo flock of giant ducks, and this is one of them. It wanders to you. All right, we, we kill the shit out of it. Another generic duck. Okay. Dukes, you say. Well, let's drop over here. Head up Torg. All right. Let me show you something, he says. He points to John hammer at the back corner you hadn't noticed before. It's the malice of forethought. You're strong enough to use it now. Pulverize stuff with your regularizing tender regular tenderizing hammer, but the malice allows you to combine the essence of the things you pulverize. Malice of forethought. Neat. Wow, I don't even know what I can make. I'll smash a seven ball. Three piles of twinkly powder. Neat. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess I don't really know exactly what I'm searching. Oh, here we go. You find yourself inside McGilligan's barn with the back to the wall and a horde of ducks advancing on you. Well, not advancing as uh, I'm milling about aimlessly, but they're getting closer to you, nevertheless. Look around and see if there's anything nearby that might be of use. Within your reach, you can see a pitchfork, a cowbell, and a coil of barbed wire. We can make a fence, spring on the cowboy. Let's make a fence. Wrap yourself in a bar bar carcoon and sit in the corner, rocking back and forth, muttering to yourself until the ducks get bored and head out to the pond for a swim. Okay. Is that what you wanted? Oh, they've moved to the pond now. You're fighting a figure skating duck. One of the ducks that had gotten driven from the barn into the frigid waters of McGilligan's parm. Decided to make the best of a bad situation. And like when mom says, when life makes you ice, when life gives you ice, make ice water. And they somehow fashioned a pair of ice skates. Oh, we got duct tape. Length of duct tape. It's got a light side, a dark side, and it holds old geek jokes together. That's. You're fighting a frozen duck. This is a duck that got driven in the frigid waters of McGilligan's Parm. Big, cold, angry at the adventurer that's responsible, and in case you didn't remember, that adventurer is you. Nice. We got a frozen feather. Generally, if you're going to freeze a duck, take the feathers off first. Someone didn't follow this advice, and they've got this frozen feather. I guess you could use it to tickle a snowman if that's your thing. It's a meat smithing component, and it deals 55. Nope, it's worth 55 meat. Another frozen duck. So I guess I'm just doing this, right? Oh, wait. Okay, now. Dukes. Still dukes, huh? Frozen feather. It swoops into the pond and tries to do a dive bomb on you. Fortunately, the pond is so cold, it frees around the ducks like trapping in the ice forever. Frozen feather, let me see here. 
Ja, na da 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 da. Staff of the walk-in freezer. Oh, great. It's a magic thing. You only jiggle your staff once per fight. Ooh. There are no more ducks here. Interesting. So I guess now we drive them. S oh, here we go. Uh, once again, find yourself in a corner surrounded by a bunch of ducks. Corner is a little more interesting. Lit pile next to a pile of hay. Lit lantern next to a pile of hay and a huge rusty bear trap hanging on the wall. It's a bear trap. Spring to action. Grab the bear trap off the wall and spend 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get it to set up. They get bored, wander off the McKilla, wander off towards the McKillic and get a family plot in hopes that people buried there are more interesting than you are. So can I set up more than one area? Oh, yeah. This is ridiculous. Here you are on your own. Here you are again on your own in this corner of the stupid barn with another bunch of stupid ducks blocking your stupid progress. A uh, quick look around you reveals a metal drum labeled Whack and Grease on whose origins and purpose you don't want to speculate. Hang on the wall behind the barrel is a double-barreled shotgun. Hanging behind the shotgun is a joke involving three barrels. Actually, not really. There is nothing hanging behind the shotgun. What would you like to do? Let's shoot him. This is my boomstick. Haha. <laughs> You say, as you aim for the horde of ducks and pull the bow triggers. That didn't work at all, you say, in the ensuing silence. Ducks wait to see if you're going to say anything funny, and you don't, so they head over the shitty thicket and get drunk off of Farmer McGillagata's moonshine. And there are no more ducks there. Interesting. So now I guess we can adventure here. You're fighting a drunk duck. This duck, having been driven into the shady thicket, stumbled on the farmer still, and it's still drunk. Bottle of gin and some boxed wine. Nice. A mean drunk duck. This duck having been driven into the Haiti. Hill, and apparently it had a bad day before that point, or it's got innate violent tendencies that come out when it drinks because it is positively enraged right now. Let's hope it doesn't focus its rage on you. Well, you know, get yourself ready for a brawl. Another mean drunk. Regular drunk. I mean, it would probably make sense if... Oh, boy. That's my uh, thing going off again. This is dumb. It's enough out of you. All right. Frozen feather. From the pond. McKilligan got his farm. Only the farmhouse. The other locations may be open based on choices while adventuring. Okay. Hmm. Macmillan and McGillicuddy. Oh, that makes sense. I see. Okay, so it's just not too big a deal, right? Let's, uh, let's kill this duck, and then I'll go to the family plot. You're finding a zombie duck. This duck, which formerly craved grains, has now developed a craving for brains. At this moment, the brains which it seems to crave the most are the ones inside that skull of yours. No, not my skull brains. We got a frightful feather. This is a feather plucked from the dark wing of a gently spooky duck, possibly plucked from the same duck modeled on those vampire ducks on the strings that were popular in the kingdom a while back. If you stuffed a pillow with these things, you'd have nightmares that would make David Lynch directing a David Cronenberg adaptation of a Stephen... King script look tame. Vampire duck. This is a duck after being driven into the McGillagutty family pot, got bitten by a vampire, or a different vampire duck. That part is uncertain. What is certain is that it's got a taste for human blood, and it's figured you've got a whole mess of it in those veins of yours. We got more duct tape. Zombie duck. Okay. I guess I can cut it here and then come back whenever I've got the next few areas unlocked, so I will do so. I'll see you guys after that. Hey, we're back. Turns out I didn't even have to go to all these areas. I just had to go to uh, four of them. Ach, the dukes are gone. Thank you. How can I ever repay you? How about dedicating a portion of your farm to growing hops and make better beer for the Fred Army? I, I can do that for you. Cool. Ah, here you are. Fresh from the fields, these are. We've got McGillan Cuddy's special lager. 
Let's take a look at that, shall we? You McKillicuddy drink the McKillicuddy special layer. You briefly spiel as special as your mom always said you were, McKillicuddy. Uh, wow, that's really good. This is a bottle of expensive, expensive looking microbrew beer. Special, uh, label real special lager. From the choice is hops, most robust and flavorful barley. Pure water joint drawn from the well. They're not skimping on brand identification, and it's a really good thing. Let's take a look here. Uh, lager. Basted beer brought. Interesting. And frat brats. Nice. <laughs> cool. Um, I think that's everything, right? Yeah, I've, I've kind of done all the side quests, so the only area remaining is this. So that last area unlocks at five at four fifty eight. And we're now killing sixty four per battle. Seppi wears the Shamak camouflage chef's hat and tie dyed apron of an elite subunit of the Baker Company, Green Gourmets. Mission is to take the art of science and stoner cooking to the next level. Forget brownies and cookies. These guys are kicking it up a nug. That's funny. See a couple of frat boys touching long planks of wood to the side of a keg tank. Then they drive through the rank of hippie ranks. The rank hippie ranks. Mass paddling as they go. Dozens of hippies through the battlefield. Tears in their filthy, filthy eyes. Nice. Drop some of these off. Cool. So what do we even got now? We've got 43. Oh, that reminds me. I can go to the other areas, right? If you left over, bump it a bump. All right, what about you? Oh, nice. We get a card of the profits. Interesting. Of course, now that I've bought nearly everything, I don't know if I even need that much more. But that's okay. Uh, what do you give me? Well, that's pretty much everything. So. So we've got 522 left. How much do we need to kill a thousand? Okay. And then we divide this by 64. And it'll take us about eight turns. Interesting. Allegedly. Mobile armored sweat lodge. Crude lodge. A sweat lodge. Crude wooden buildings filled with hot coals that hippies sit when, when they want to sweat out the toxins and impurities they are so sure the modern body fills their world with. Which with they're so sure the modern world fills their bodies. This one has wheels and it's coming right towards you. Scary as the idea of a big box of naked hippies is, the idea of a big mobile box of naked hippies paralyzes you with fear. Nearly. A naked hippie emerges from the top of the lodge and looks at you and he says, Wow, I could see your aura, man. Oh, fuck. Naked hippie emerges from the top carrying a bucket of hot coals. He dumps it on you. Probably didn't see you there, but it still hurts. A lot. Lose 19 hit points. We got a gas balloon. See a couple of frat boys stick a fuse into a huge wooden barrel, light the fuse, and roll down the hill to where the hippie forces are fighting. Judging by the big bada boom that follows, the barrel was even f either full of scotch or gunpowder, and possibly both. A gas balloon, huh? What is that? It's a combat item. Balloon filled with potent knockout guys used by hippie armies to knock their opponents out. If looks get killed, these probably will. Stuns your opponent. Nice. Or Hippie Fire Spinner. Hippie is twirling two flaming bags of something, possibly at the end of long strings. Kind of impressive. Kind of like watching a good yo-yo trick, only with a possibility of charred flesh and burnt dreadlocks. War Rigger. Already read about you. Another oversized pipe. Thank you. Already read about the Dread Squad. Oh, you're still... Jeez. Uh, Airborne Commander. Already got... Wait, did I get that? No, I didn't. Damn. Okay, well, I'll try to read that if I get that again. I've read that. There's no hippie soldiers left. The weight of the camp is clear. We did it. We finally did it. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. You walk through the carnage of the battlefield, feeling your anger and your gorge rise with every casualty you see. True, most of them are casualties you created, but it still makes you mad to see life wasted like that. 
I mean, you're supposed to be beating up in hippies and fat boys to steal their loot and pass the time. It's not like there's a damn war going on. Since this violence isn't fun, if there's a purpose behind it, you glance at the mist obscuring the battlefield. There must always be mist on the battlefield. Some say it's to obscure the parts that aren't finished loading yet, but you don't know what that means. And you see a chubby, unkempt figure dressed in a bathrobe, pajama pants, and improbable sandals. It must be. It is. The great Wisniewski. Wisniewski. The hippie who has the respect and awe of all the hippies in the camp. Surely together you can find a way to end the war. Cautiously approach, making sure not to spill his beverage. Mr. Nwinski, you say. Uh, hey, I'm not a Nwinski, man. Just call me this guy. That's me. Uh, okay. This guy, the stupid war, says stop. It has to end here. So you blankly. So you speak his language. This is the end, beautiful friend. Can you picture what will be? So let me listen free. He spins around angrily. No way, man. Those rotten frat boys killed our pet fair. They entered a world of pain when they did that. A world of pain. That ferret committed suicide, you say. Guys, this guy's eyes go wide. That's what the man wants you to think, man. This is conspiracy, man. No way the ferret acted alone. I mean, if you look at the angle where the, the ferret struck the pavement, man, you'll see that well, there's some information that's been brought to light. I mean, do you really think you should be talking to me that way when I have this? I mean, they, they killed that ferret, man. It really tied the camp together. Well, you say, since I can't talk some sense into you, maybe I can beat some into you. Bring it on. Oh, it's already been brought in fighting the big win win ski this guy mostly known by his nickname this guy is the very embodiment of hippie slackerism or maybe slippy hackerism he doesn't have a job never showers wears a bathroom gym, pajama pants another time and generally spends his day in a confused fog brought on by herbal smoke and white canadian canadians the beverage of choice you get the jump on him why not holy shit you freeze your opponent with a chill of your homeland Dealing 1,314 damage. Someone should carve a freeze to commemorate the occasion. And you gain nine hit points. He produces a marmot from inside his bathroom. Before you can say, nice marmot, he throws it at you. It rips at your flesh and smells terrible to boot. Can I do that again? Wow. Frost rhymes your eyebrows, but does not rhyme with eyebrows, as you clobber your foe for a lot of damage. This guy slumps over to feet and sits down in the lowest position. He's hurt pretty badly, but manages to slow his breathing and starts chanting, Om, looking pretty serene for someone whose insides are mostly on the outside. Uh, shouldn't, you go see, shouldn't you go see a doctor or something? He looks at you and smiles beatifically. You see, man, hippie's death isn't the end of a journey. It's the beginning of a journey. We do not mourn our passing because we know we will continue in our karma quest for enlightenment. This is a doorway, man. I knew I might die here, so I, set my morning, so I, in, I spent all morning setting my affairs in order. I'm at peace and prepare to move on. He resumes chanting and stops and looks troubled. But wait, did I leave the gas on? Pew! Tire Hippie Camp makes a sudden magical conversion into a giant ball of blue and orange fire. The resulting shockwave knocks you on your back, which is good because the explosion is followed by a wave of shrapnel from broken clay beads, splintered incense sticks, and shattered glass, quote, sculptures, unquote. After a few aftershocks, all is done except for the crackling of flame and the moons are wounded. Flaming wheel from one of the hippies' looms comes rolling out of the wreckage obligatorily and settles at your feet. You stare open-mouthed at the carnage that used to be the hippie camp. You remember you're obligated to make a witty remark. Thanks, guys, you say as you strut off the battlefield. It's been a gas. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's pretty good, and I would say that that's a good place to stop it for now. So I'll see you guys next episode. I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. And we're getting really close to the end. Mm -hmm.